Hi guys, it's Sterling Inspector here. Real quick before the video starts, I just want to mention that I've opened a Discord for you guys. The link for it is in the description. It's basically a place where you guys can go if you have any questions about mining, or if you're stuck on any problems when mining. So in today's video, we're going to be testing out the new 3050 card from NVIDIA. I'm happy to have got this card as you guys know it's really hard to get new cards when they release. My card that I bought is a Zotac Twin Edge OC. As you can see here, it has 8GB of VRAM, which is GDDR6. The core clock is 1807, and the memory clock is 14,000 MHz. We have a power consumption of around 130 watts, but when we get into overclock settings, we reduce this. One of the main benefits of this is it only requires an 8-pin connector. When I measured the power from the wall, it gave a figure of around 140 watts at maximum. So the 3050, as I understand, isn't made for mining. Instead, it's meant to curb the GPU shortage that we are having and combat the inflated prices of GPUs. As NVIDIA have tried to do countless times with LHR, they are really looking out for gamers and really want gamers to get these cards and for miners to stop using them to mine. So therefore, this 3050 is made as a lower-end GPU, which is aimed at gamers that can't get a hold of these higher-end GPUs such as 3090s and 3080s. So I bought mine for $250, which is pretty cheap compared to the other GPU prices. But these GPUs also sold out straight away and I can't find them anywhere for MSRP anymore. So it's safe to say that a lot of them were bought just purely to mine. I'm going to be testing if it's worth it to buy this card for mining today. I'm going to be testing it on all major coins that are at the top of what to mine. So this will be Ethereum, Flux, Ergo, Raven and Ciro. I'm only including Ciro because I recently made a video on how to mine it and wanted to test out the hash rate for this coin as well. So for the test I'll be trying to push for the highest efficiency and not just purely hash rate. Also before we get into the results of testing, I just want to mention that these cards do have LHR installed on them, so you have to use an unlock for them on the ETH hash algorithm. So let's get into it. So firstly, we look at the results for Ethereum. For this algorithm, we need an LHR unlockable miner, so we used LOL miner. Now, as you can see, we have our overclock settings to the right and the results to the left. So I got a hash rate of around 13.82 mega hash, and it was pulling around 85 watts. This gave us a very small efficiency of 0.164. Our temperature was about 50 degrees and the fan percentage was at 60%. Now these overclock settings are the best I have found. The power limit doesn't seem to care too much when mining as this card basically pulls as much as it needs for each algorithm that it's used on. The core clock has been minus by 500 as that tends to work well on the ETH hash and we have also upped the memory clock by 1500, as this algorithm likes a higher memory clock. The fans are just preference, but I had it on 60% for the less intensive algorithms, then upped it to 70% on the more power hungry ones. So now let's move on to Fluxcoin, which has been mined on the Zellhash algo. For this test, I was using Mini Z Miner to mine with. So we've altered the overclock settings by firstly changing the core clock settings to plus 210 and then the power limit has been up to 100%. Finally, the fans have been up to 70% just because this algorithm tends to pull more power and the card gets hotter. So we have a hash rate of 22.11 solutions per second and a draw of 126 watts. This gave us an efficiency of 0.18 sols per watt. I found that Flux actually draws a lot of power and I thought it would be less as other cards tend not to draw as much power when mining Flux. Next we have Ravencoin which has the same overclock settings as I used on Flux. So this was done using T-Rex Miner on Ravencoin's custom algorithm which is Kapow. So we got a hash rate of 12.39 mega hash and a draw of 128 watts. This gave us an efficiency of 0.115. Obviously, we know the profits from Ravencoin have gone down a bit, but I still feel like it's a good measure on how, graph how good a graphics card is. And the algorithm is based off the prog power algorithm, which many coins use. Next coin I tested was Ergo 
I used T-Rex Miner on the Auto Coolos algorithm. So for our overclock, we had the same ones used for Ethereum, and this gave us a mega hash of 33.97, and the card was drawing around 85 watts again. This gave us an efficiency of 0.4. So the last coin I tested was Zero Coin. If you guys want to learn how to mine this, then I have a video on my channel that was uploaded recently. So for the algorithm of this coin, it is ProgPow, and I was using T-Rex Miner. We used the same overclock sentence from Ravencoin, as this is basically the same algorithm. We got a hash rate of 13.21 mega hash per second, which is slightly above that of Ravencoin's, and a power draw of 127 watts. This gave us an efficiency of 0.104. So now I've shown you all the tests, let's look at the profitability of this card. So at the top we have Zero Coin, which brings in 0 0.76 cents, then Raven Coin, which brings in 0 0.63 cents, and then Flux, which brings in 0 0.56 cents. And then surprisingly in fourth we have ETH, which brings in 0 0.55 cents, and then we have Ergo, which brings in 0 0.33. Based off these results, I can confidently say that this card is probably one of the worst cards to mine with. Just to put it into perspective, it would take you around 400 days to ROI on this card. And that's even when you're mining the most profitable coin. So I guess this test has really shown how bad these cards are for us miners. If you're thinking about getting it for mining, I would definitely advise against that. However, if you are a gamer, then this would be a good card for you, as it's relatively cheap and can also ray trace. So overall, the 3050 is disappointing for us miners, but great for people who are trying to find a low priced GPU. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and comment below if you have any thoughts on the new 3050 card.